Hello, it is June 30th, uh, 2023. We are here at Summit Park, West Virginia. Uh, this is kind of a wild vlog. Uh, I didn't know how I was gonna start this or what we were doing, but here we are. <laughs> we're gonna introduce, tell them who you are and what you're about. So I'm Zach McAfee. I'm the owner of Sim Seats Driving Simulators, and we're gonna put this punk on track. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, we've got the car. We, we have, uh, I've never driven a stick in my life. I don't know how we've gotten this far, but I just took the, you just took me around this parking lot. We put this together. Uh, that was a crazy experience, but honestly, a lot easier than I thought it would be. Yeah, you did good, man. It's obvious that something about iRacing has helped you to <laughs> drive a stick because you didn't stall it the first time. I did stall it once, though. I'm, <laughs> I'm ashamed, but only once, though. So well, I guess twice when I came back in. We won't talk about the second. No, we'll edit that. Out. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it is starting to drizzle here. Uh, it is late Friday night, but the real stuff starts tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. So uh, anything else you'd like to say before we get going tomorrow? Um, I hope we can carry a little bit more speed than five miles an hour on track tomorrow. That would be great. That was what we accomplished today, but that's good. <laughs> we got to set our goals reasonable. That's right. Um, but tomorrow we're going to do driver's meeting in the morning. This has already been tech inspected. And then um, we're going to do classroom. So you'll be in classroom first to start. Perfect. And then we'll put you in the car, and I'll be your instructor right seat. And we'll get you up to speed at Summit Point, not Summit Park. Oh, is that what I said? Oh, jeez. It's okay. We'll edit that out. Uh, yep. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll be seeing you. Hello. It is July 1st. It is 6.41 in the morning. Uh, I'm about on time, but I need to get rolling. I'm going to try to force feed myself a McGriddle over here at McDonald's. I am the nervous. Yesterday night went really well. I was really nervous for that. Um, mostly just because I'd never driven stick in my life. So doing that um, made me feel a bit more comfortable. Um, to whereas today I feel like I can sit back and learn a lot more. Um, hopefully um, we have a lot of classroom time it sounds like. And then... Um, a fair amount of on-track time so um, my pal Travis will be in town to help me film and record I don't know what all you guys will see uh, I'm obviously super excited but super nervous at the same time so the vlog sucks I apologize but hopefully we'll have some cool stuff to show you First real update, uh, we got our first like meeting out of the way for everybody participating today. For me, very good, a lot of good information. I already had a good idea. Um, we got about 15 minutes, so we got some class time. Uh, I'm excited for that. Let's go, go team! Yeah! All right, first place that we're gonna pass is the front straight. So remember, we're coming out in the front straight. Let's cover something for a second. Anybody know what I'm gonna cover? Left line, left line. So when you come out on track. All right, the first one is done. Um, so now we've got about 30 minutes until I go out on track for the first time. It is 9 o'clock right now. Uh, learned some very, very basic stuff, obviously. Um, the biggest thing for me going from simulated track to real track is that you got to look at flags. Um, you got to be aware of everybody else, obviously. Safety is the number one concern. So um, just a lot of flag things and uh, a lot of hand maneuvers. Um, there's passing zones, having to let pe uh, people pass, all that stuff. So um, certainly a learning curve, but uh, Zach's going to keep us straight. Let's go! Stop. Yeah! we got from the weekend was from my middle session. It's probably for the best because anything out of this first session uh, would have been pretty rough. Even going back and looking through Travis's footage, whew, man, it is slow. Especially for the first lap or two, it's a warm-up lap for all the cars anyways, but once the green flag opened, it was still quite the adjustment for myself. Just getting acquainted to the track, getting acquainted to the car, and getting acquainted to the shift points. But hopefully by the end of this video, you'll see what a difference a weekend could make.
Alright, well, um, first driving session on track has been completed. Um, there's a lot of mix of stuff going on today, but for us, we did the 30 minutes classroom and then 30 minutes out on track. Um, so, well, let me tell you, uh, I, was going out, I was going out there pretty slow. Uh, pretty slow and only shifting uh, two parts of the track. So, uh, just down shifting from forward to third, fourth to third into turn one and then from third to fourth. Uh, the last straight uh, down to turn 10 and then um, down the main straight got a awesome ass but um, the biggest thing is just getting used to the the gearing and, and driving H pattern because I've never done it um, and then obviously trying to go fast like that is another challenge as well so having to take it very very slow is very important um, other than that apparently we were rubbing tires out there <laughs> but I wasn't going fast enough for it to kill the tires so we're good just gonna have to lift it up a little bit hopefully we'll be on the back here at some point these nerds Alrighty, well, it is uh, about 11.30. Hello. So I've had two classroom times and one on track time. Uh, I got a bit of time till the next class. And then I think I get one more on track today. Um, so I'm just kind of walking around. And, uh, you know, obviously never really been here, so I'd like to see the track. Uh, I just took off one way and let's see what I see. Wow. All right, so this is uh, turn four, I believe. I'm still learning the numbers. <laughs> um, like, I know the track well, obviously, from my racing, but it's just, uh, you know, putting the numbers to the corners. So they're hauling. They're hauling pretty good. Some of the more experienced guys, like, I was coming down here, and I was taking my sweet-ass time up here, like, another corner, but it's, like, you know, getting off here. Uh, I was not shifting at this part of the track, so it's really just getting the line down and getting comfortable with it. Obviously, these guys are a lot more comfortable and rolling a lot faster through here. One of the biggest things for me going from the simulator to the real track is that on the simulator, when something happens, uh, any of the flags just pop up on your screen, right? Caution flag, blue flag, black flag, whatever. Um, you know, on a real track, you gotta find the flag stands. See, there's one there. So it's just really training and getting your eyes down the right way. You know, still doing all, you, all you're doing as a driver. Um, getting through the gears, finding your line, all that stuff, but then also, you know, identifying um, cars around you and, and all that stuff. So it's just an added bit. I'm trying to figure it out. This is a fun spot to watch, though. Okay, as I was walking up here, I am very sure I just saw a deer go from one end of the track and go across in there over the fence. Um, so I, I feel like for me, um, at least in my first bit on the track, this is one of the tougher spots. Just because I was shifting, driving it around the paddock was one thing, and then getting out there and changing gears as you're braking into a corner. Um, so uh, we started off braking at the five. Uh, I got down to four and a half, which big gains. But yeah, it's just man, tough to be smooth when you've never done it before, right? So that was the biggest thing: is just getting it slowed down appropriately and, and, and smoothing it out. I didn't have a whole lot of go. We had like a 30-minute session, right? But um, it was really good to get that feel. It's just interesting after now doing it, watching these guys kind of tackle the track. You can see this angle of the corner. I was just up a little bit there. Um, and this is, looks like as far as I can go. <laughs> it's a rare moment. There's not any cars on the track. I freaking love this track. I've been here for like less than a whole day total. It's just, I love it. The scenery is just wonderful. And now the cars are silent. It's just out in the country, man. I still cannot believe this racetrack was 50 minutes, 50 miles south of me this entire time. Didn't even know. <laughs> I know now. So I'm a point big fan. All right, well, I've walked far enough to get lost. I, I thought I was going to come up on another corner. The race car noises are getting softer. I'm just kind of in the middle of the forest now. <laughs> It's a nice nature walk. Unexpected. Accompanied by race car noises. Just looking for the track again. Let's turn around. Oh, we got a fork in the road. Which way do we go? I say left. Let's go. All right, I found more racetrack. This is a fun little section right here. Oh, man. All right, so we're down here past four. I'm trying to think. You kind of have like a little bit of kink. The main thing is, 
yeah. So I, the last class we were talking about, uh, and, and again, I'm so far behind it feels like. However, you know, a lot of these guys um, just talking about taking this last corner into five here. Just really setting yourself up here. Now, when I was doing it, uh, I was setting myself up because I was going so slow that I was coming out of here and moving towards the white line and the right. That way I could turn in. Based off of, you know, class, classroom stuff and, and some of these other cars. And some of the other cars, obviously, are just going to take it more different anyways. But I should be coming off here more speed uh, and then coming off more in the middle of the track. And then taking a flatter, probably, entrance then. And then you set yourself up for the whole rest of the bit. This is really fun, though, being out there in the car in this bit. Uh, just trying to set up your apexes correctly. Uh, it's just a very windy bit, and it's easy to get offline. But I really started to get a flow there towards the end. I just wish I could carry more speed. Hey, there it is. Yeah, let's go. So, Zach told me I was... Oh, he's ripping it. Oh, hell yeah. Zach told me he was... We were putting down smoke when we were in there because it wasn't set up for both of us to be in there. And But I, luckily, I wasn't going fast enough to damage the tires. Oh, yeah, he's, he's on it. Yeah, f yeah. yeah. He's zipping a little, uh, quite a bit more than I was, believe it or not. Uh, some of these other guys, this looks like... Uh, yeah, this was my group. Um, so, again, learning... Uh, I'm in the beginner group blue track days uh, this looks to be about my group I was not really focusing on the cars that I was that were around me but I got passed by a lot of these cars uh, especially the yeah the, I was a part of this line for a minute um, yeah <laughs> yeah it's pretty interesting so you then you just basically have to uh, if you're the uh, the black car up here you just gotta uh, there's designated passing zones for us so I think we had three total uh, and one of them will be coming up since they have a straightaway. But yeah, you kind of get in this. I wasn't really fast enough to get caught up too bad. But um, yeah, just, I don't know, a little bit of insight. Again, I'm still learning this myself, but um, this is cool. See a little better what I was talking about down here. It's just this right-hand kink where you're already coming downhill from this, this uh, way anyways. So just off my little experience, boy, I could see how this could be quite the troubling section. You come down here a little too fast. Uh, you know, pushing it a little too hard because it straightens up. But that little bit of time you have before you have this sharp left hander and you get going around the corner, so <laughs> yeah, very interesting. I'm just trying to see it from a different perspective. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of different cars, a lot of different uh, levels of driving out here for sure. It's very, very interesting. It's getting pain cakey. Walking around here in a long sleeve shirt and jeans. Uh, Zach took me on a little ride around. He fucking sent it there on the last lap. <laughs> um, we got one more class coming up here at 1.30. And then uh, I believe I'm going out one more time. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, it's been a really fun day at the track so far. i tell you what. Alright, it's getting about that time. We're going to the second to last. This is, this is it for me on track today. The cameras are coming out. We didn't have a lot of in-car footage. I'm just gonna pretty much leave most of this unedited. It's not a whole lot, but I think it just gives a lot of great insight into how I was learning and what I was taking in and what it's like in your middle session at Summit Point. And looks like we'll be at the back of the line, which is fine. And I would say even we'll go out with them, but give them some space so that you know we're not caught in a big old train. 
anything specific you want to work on this time around? Uh, the biggest thing to me was uh, downshifting, it seemed. Okay. Um, honestly, it felt like every time I was downshifting, I didn't feel too bad about it. I was just... Right here? Okay. My fault. It just, I guess, smoothness under braking and... With that, but everything else I felt um, pretty solid. Just trying to gain a little bit more speed. Then. Okay. All right. So we'll focus on your basically your routine going into turn one, your breaking point. Make that consistent at the four and a half, which is where we left off last time. And then get your keep your braking pressure the same. Get your downshift done while you're straight, and then bleed that clutch out nice and easy. You can go ahead. Okay. Good to go. All right. So go ahead and downshift in the second. Get on it. Go ahead. Give the brakes a couple of pumps just to make sure that they can get some heat in them. Yeah. Uh, see the yellow is still out. Okay. So you can go at really any pace you want right now because we don't have any traffic around us. Okay. Just for the hell of it, try shifting into fourth now. Okay. Alright. Now go down the chute here. Straighten up the wheel and then downshift into third, back where you were. Go down to third now. And run off and easy off of the clutch. Try to smooth that out. So that's something we might work up to. Go ahead and pick up your speed. Pick up your speed. It's just releasing, you're saying? To be smooth. Yeah. Yep. We're smoother getting off the clutch. Because basically your, because we're not heel towing yet, your engine is going to break the car a lot because it's down at idle and then it's having to come back up to higher RPM by dragging the rear tires. So what you want to do is just make that a lot smoother, more gradual by releasing the clutch slowly okay. on your downshift. So same thing on, on the front straight. I got you. Flags, the track is hot. We got traffic behind us. Give him point by to the right. He can stay on the throttle. He's got 400 horsepower. He doesn't need any help. And brakes. And downshift. Same pedal pressure. Easy off on the clutch. And then turn in on the throttle. On the throttle. So you'll stay to the right and give him a point to the left. You can stay on the throttle. Stay on the throttle. All right, back on the throttle. There you go. Roll on the throttle. Open up the steering wheel. Open up the steering wheel. Straighten it up. There you go.
Yeah. <laughs> I felt the carrying a little bit there. <laughs> it's like, okay, you know, just a little security break, but I understand, yeah, I understand what you mean. That's just my uh, reflex, I suppose. Okay. Car's got a lot of grip, so you got plenty of room. I got you. All right, back to your arc, nice and smooth. You can carry some more speed here. to the right. this downshift broke it <laughs> but that's about how my middle session went i really wish we had some on board from the third session when i really found some speed but luckily travis came through with some great clips you'll see here in just a few minutes I'd never driven an H pattern in my life. I was like, dear God, please let me figure it out. Not too hard. All right. Um, still, obviously, I have to do some smoothing it up, but like, yeah, obviously went way faster that time. That was like, that was cool. Like, you really feel the tires that time. You really feel the car and the G forces and like moving around in the car. And like I was telling him, we get down going like three and then into four. Like, you haul it. Like, I was hauling ass down in there or more ass than I was, and you can actually like feel it. So. Um, <laughs> I can only imagine some of these guys that probably know the track a lot better. The faster cars going down in there. Yeah, Lamborghini down there. I don't know. Oof, that'd be fun taking that down. <laughs> but, um, yeah, 
that was freaking nuts. You got any final words? Well, you're talking about going through turn four, going through the chute, and when you started carrying more speed, and there's a little bit of a sense of fear that you were describing relative to iRacing. Yeah, yeah, that's um, because it's like on iRacing, you're watching the the green or red the relative bar, and it's like, all right, you can send it. And it's like, you know, if you get on the grass, right, whatever. But it's like you're down there, you got somebody riding with you. It's like, holy, and then you like feel it. It's like, oh my god, am I gonna? <laughs> is this thing gonna grip up when I turn down in there? That's the craziest part to me. That's that's freaking. Last thing we did that day, Zach took me on a couple professional hot laps. Here's how that went. Alright, here we go. Oh, yes. the first full day not much to say other than that was freaking amazing i can't tell you how nervous i was uh coming into this um yeah i I'd, i thought i'd be coming in with a, just a little bit of h pattern like stick experience uh i came in with zero um so to drive around the car you know around the paddock friday night um certainly helped a little bit and then uh the first session today might only terrifying but it's like once you get out there it's like you know okay it was all right it's just me specifically getting through the gears that is the toughest part um i told them guys like every time i was going to downshift i was just waiting to hit the wrong one and then the, it makes the eye racing wee, boom and then the meatball pops up right so um i wasn't shifting a whole lot over the lap just into turn one from fourth to third and then back up from third to fourth and turn uh at a turn 10 or at a turn nine technically the second session went um way better and was a lot easier the second time around um in the second 30 i picked up uh, quite a bit of pace um again i'm not sure what you'll see and how i'll be able to edit this one together but um the second session is where i was able to really pick up some speed and feel the car um and yeah that was that was pretty freaking wild it's hard to describe because you're still really not even going that fast but um, just to feel the car, feel it move. Um, it, it honestly, uh, like I told Zach, it resembled uh, like a cart. That's the only real experience I have hustling anything. Once he took me for a ride in it, uh, I saw everything he could get out of the car. Um, just that side to side motion and the way him slinging around the, the car on the track um, imitated just a faster go kart almost. So it's just crazy. Um, I think back to the last two Decembers, the two PRI trade shows I did bunch of vendors from really anything motorsports related you could possibly think of uh just one of the coolest uh events you can probably go to if you're into cars racing all that kind of stuff right so last two years i was there i was working simulators right and um so i got to talk to many drivers and coaches and all kinds of stuff and, and that was always the question hey if you, you know you're irising guy if you got there out there on the real track and, and the answer is always no uh today that changed for me and that is uh pretty freaking cool i still want to go faster <laughs> that's what we got tomorrow for but um yeah i just um so far i just uh, this experience has been very cool I, again a lot of nerves going in but um uh, i guess it helps to have uh about 11 years worth of irising experience <laughs> i just uh very thankful to sim seats i hope you show those guys a lot of love 
uh, for letting me do this. Uh, you know, hopefully I don't uh, dick it up uh, on day two. Day two. First bit of classroom done for the day. Um, we're gonna do a uh, offline drill, a first drill, uh, which is just staying all the way to the right on the first lap, and then all the way to the left on the second lap. So just practicing being offline, essentially to help passing and whatnot. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't think that'd be too difficult. And then green flag after the first two, and then let it rip. So booster seats going in. We got this sippy cup holder. <laughs> you bring your bib. <laughs> to go out for our last time. This is it. Um, I'm gonna try to go faster than I did the second time. We're gonna do a drill. I don't know about how you just got here. It's like a two lap drill. Um, every, that's why I, we're gonna lead the line, I guess. Once that's done though, we're gonna send it. So we'll see what we get. We're putting a lap time on the deck lid. Whether it's fast or not, we'll see. part for me going back and watching all this footage is from day one getting passed by every single car in this group at least once these clips in my third session where i passed every single car in the group except for the one red porsche out there he had a few more ponies than us i can't tell you how much fun this was oh my goodness Part two. Part three, I guess. I went fast that time. <laughs> Yes. Oh, brother. All right, Zach. Yeah, tell them. How do we do? All right. So we're going to look at lap times in a second. Oh, man. Um, and it's it's good. It's a good picture. Okay. Um, but, yeah, like your pace after the second session yesterday, night and day. Yeah. And I noticed the same thing you did when we went out there. Like we, when the green flag came out, we took off. We were just running. And everybody was gone. Yeah. And then next thing you know, we caught the back of the path. 
at a total different pace from yesterday. So yeah. something clicked for you for sure after yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, it was just, I mean, honestly, just right along with you yesterday, seeing how you were like maneuvering and it just honestly seeing how much the car really has in it. Obviously, you know, it's hard to feel like lap in and lap out, just like going that little bit more and trying to find the, the limit. But like, yeah. Um, yeah, obviously this time around, like now that I got some shift points down and I really got comfortable shifting and that was like the biggest thing for me, just getting through that, like, hey, I'm gonna downshift this thing and it's not gonna explode and catch on fire. Like, you know, <laughs> being able to do that and then turn into one, find some speed and just a lot more throttle input than obviously the first day too, it's learning the throttle and just how much I can really give it and, and go, so. Okay. Um, so I'm curious, like in iRacing, you, you, you find the limit based on some kind of input from iRacing, right? right. But, but that was different here. Like how, how does finding the limit in iRacing differ from finding the limit on track in real life? Um, well, it's like on iRacing, you sit in there, at least me specifically, like straight up, you can just overdrive the corners until you wreck or until you stop wrecking, I guess, and find the limit that way. Um, but it's like, obviously you can't do that out here. We can't just bend it straight into turn one every time until we get it down. So, um, yeah, it's really just baby steps and, and, and like ease it into it. Um, and I guess with, you know, with iRacing and just that experience already knowing like what the, what the car is going to do and, and how the wheel is going to feel in different uh, situations, I guess, um, with the elevation changes and, um, like I already like. Like, I don't want to say I know what it's going to do, but I already have, like, the reflexes almost, kind of, like, it's not like we're getting out of shape or anything like that, but it's just, like, it's like, okay, I have some sort of something I could build off of, I guess, you know, and just have this general knowledge and sense of feeling when I'm out there, where it's, like, I can just gradually improve and increase, and, you know, obviously you're giving me great instructions and tips, um, so it's just, like, it makes it even easier. I can just go out there and, you know, back this up a little bit better, take it a little bit smoother, and, and arc in a little bit more. Um, Whereas I see, I'm just going out there and figuring out, throwing it into corners and seeing what sticks and what doesn't. And then you see how, how far you can make it stick at each corner and then you try to do it for a whole lap, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I just, uh, from day one to day, you know, from just driving around the paddock, you know, uh, night and day, like you said, um, that's, that's incredible. <laughs> so one way to kind of calibrate or know how fast you can go in a car is by G-forces, which is a sensory input, right? Right. So, did, like, was it surprising how much G-force that we were pulling in this car? Well, being compared to when you started? Yeah, being a, yeah, being a smaller dude, you know, you're kind of getting thrown around in the seat, but it's like, yeah, the biggest one is like, turn three, and then um, just that whole section, and then really just the downhill, feeling like the car and feeling yourself. Because then you get a real sense of, like, oh, if I don't get this straightened up, if I don't break the right way, you know, if you break offline or if I'm breaking not straight, like, whoa, you know, it's like you're bringing a lot of speed. Maybe some bucker moments. Yeah. Maybe like, you should have wore your brown pants today. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't quite that far, but there was that one moment where I, I break not straight. Yeah. And it's like, okay, you got a little bit of play in the wheel. I wasn't going, you know, too overly fast. You know, I had a general sense of, you know, where I should be, but it's yeah. just, is that point where it's like, you know, it's starting to step forward. It's just try, trying to find a little bit more because the, the two sessions we did, uh, what was that, turn four coming out, and then in, was that five that starts the hole? Yep. Um, so, like, my line was coming straight through there, and, and we are pro practicing proper straight braking, so I was wanting to set up the corner straight and, and be more towards the right side, but as I started carrying more speed, uh, especially in this session, I started moving over, and just naturally the car starts falling over, and it's like, okay, now it's really important to have these mechanics where you're braking straight, and you, you know, you're on your point. Yeah. So that was that was the biggest part of the track for me that was really interesting to learn and, and feel. So. All right, so I'm thinking, so I've got our lap times. I've got my lap times from yesterday. I've got your lap time from this session out. I'm gonna go grab the dry erase marker. We're gonna go back to the leaderboard. And then I'll tell you what your lap time was yesterday. And then I wanna know what you think your lap time was today. Okay. Is that cool? All right, yeah, All right. that sounds good. <laughs> Yesterday I ran one minute twenty nine point eight four. I checked this class, this racing class last week. They were running about a second faster than that. So race pace is about a one twenty eight and a half, somewhere around there. Yesterday you were running 
140s. So you were about 11 seconds off the pace. That's faster than I thought. Okay. <laughs> well, what do you think you did today, knowing that you were running 140s yesterday? What do you think your best lap time was today? Well, I gotta be in the 130s somewhere, I hope. Put me down for like a 135, I hope, six, I don't know. All right, you did it in a one. 30. Oh. Two. Oh. 0.48. Oh my God. Nice Holy last time. Shit. Dude, you're hustling. Oh my God. <laughs> Is that for real? That's for real. It's right there. It's in the data. Oh my God. I felt like there was one good lap where I was coming up and we caught one just at the last corner. And I was like, oh damn, back of my mumper. And I think the lap times were like, man, if I could have kept on going, that would have been a good one. But That's what I was worried about that you were thinking about lap times. Nope. Nope. Not at all. <laughs> Dude, nice job. I, I, I honestly really enjoyed instructing you. You're going from not driving an age pattern. I know we said it a thousand times, but it is pretty wild. It's not your car. It takes a while to get used to somebody else's car. You put all those pieces together and, and you ran a solid lap. So, nice well, job. Thank you. I, well, let me follow that up by saying I was scared shitless coming into this. Uh, <laughs> something I always wanted to do, obviously, but you know, I wanted to get some age pattern stick uh, shift experience coming in. I didn't have it. I was shitting bricks and, uh, you know, coming into, you know, practice around the paddock and whatnot, but yeah. um, that was the biggest thing, just getting comfortable with that, and I mean, honestly, I don't I don't think, I, I wouldn't have been instructed by anybody else, yeah, he did a hell of a job, like, it just explaining everything and, and being patient with me, and, and even just the classroom stuff, just little things, like some of the stuff, you know, obviously, I, I know, but some of the stuff, like, it makes sense, and just general track, you around the track and getting comfortable with it, like, yeah. um, that was, that was a, a hell of experience, and um, after doing it all, like, man, I think I actually paid off a little bit, you know, just having that general sense, like, um, going through it now, it's like, hey, it makes sense. We put it together. I don't know how. I ran a 132. <laughs> you were there, man. That's badass. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Now all we got to do is sell about a thousand sim seeds to pay for this whole weekend. <laughs> <laughs> all right, simseeds.com. Everybody watching, go buy a simulator. Thank you very much. Get you, get yourself acquainted and come out to the track. Yes, absolutely. Hell yeah. Well, that, my friends, is about it. Really enjoyed going back and editing this, watching all the footage. This was an incredible, incredible experience. And I can't thank Zach and Sim Seats enough for this opportunity. I really hope you guys will take a second to check out their website and their socials. I will make sure to leave all that stuff down below in the description as well as the comments. For just about as long as I can remember, Sim Seats is, has been around iRacing in the Sim Racing game. And so it was very cool to work with them and, and understand what they're about and how they can assist simulator drivers to the real world tracks for me personally starting off in the the early nascar thunder 2004 days on the ps2 to nascar 09 on the playstation 3 some of my first online experience to getting i racing in early 2012 so then to get out here and learn on this two-day track day weekend at summit point a track i drove many times over the years on i racing uh, is, is truly a dream come true and I just I can't thank these guys at Sim Seats enough for for allowing me to do this and it's something truly I will never forget I also got to give a big shout out to my homie Travis for coming up and helping us film uh, this vlog would have been tremendously worse if he wouldn't have uh, thrown the last second trip together and come up to help me out so so once again I appreciate you watching I hope you enjoyed um, thank you to everybody Zach at Sim Seats and hopefully we'll see you on the track once again very very soon